Welcome to Decision Arts, transforming data science into an art. Hello and welcome once again to another interesting session from Decision Arts. This is Geza Chandra Shekhan. Let's get started. In this video, we are going to look at our very first machine learning algorithm, which is linear regression. But before we begin, there is something that I would like to share with you that happened quite recently. I have been interviewing a lot of people lately and I asked them to choose any machine learning algorithm and most pick linear regression. And I asked them what makes it a machine learning algorithm and they can't respond to it. Do you know why? It's because they don't have a clear understanding of what machine learning is. So the objective of this video is to understand linear regression and at the same time try to set up a basis for defining machine learning with the help of these kind of algorithms. So what exactly is linear regression? The most common answer that I got in my interviews is this. Linear regression is a machine learning algorithm which tries to model the linear relationship between a predictor and a target variable. Well, to be honest, your answer was insufficient and vague. This is all that I can gather out of it. Alright, so that's our mission for this video. So we are going to complete this definition and make sure it is sufficient. Let's begin with the four things that make up this definition, which is machine learning, linear relationship, predictor and target. And I have given it an appropriate color coding so that you can remember what is what. Alright, let's start with the easy ones. The predictor and the target. Well, my problem with that is it needs to be quantified. The basic case of linear regression works with one predictor and one target variable. And when that's the case, we have a different definition for it. It's called simple linear regression. It can be easily shown in a graph format as a scatter plot and similarly in tabular format. There are various other names for the predictor and the target variable. For the predictor, it is also called as independent variable or explanatory variable. And similarly, the target variable is also called as a dependent variable, a response variable, or sometimes it's called as criterion. All right. Now that we know about the predictor and the target variable, now it's time to look at what we mean by linear relationship. So I have two equations here. The scatter plot for y equal to 0x plus 3 or y equal to 3 is a straight line parallel to the x-axis at y equal to 3. And similarly, y equal to 0x plus 7 is another parallel line to the x-axis which cuts the y-axis at y equal to 7. But what exactly differed here? Well. You can see that the line has vertically shifted. So the constant factor here is used to shift the line upward or downward. So it vertically shifts the line and the other factor that it gives is precisely at what point the line cuts the y-axis. Now I have another two lines where the only change between these lines is the coefficient of x. In this graph, you can clearly see that when y equal to x becomes y equal to 2x, the graph spins in the anticlockwise direction. Now, this gives us the idea that the coefficient of x gives us how much rotation, tilt or spin that the line has undergone. Now, putting these two things together, this is what we'll get. Alright, it's time to summarize the knowledge that we have from all these things. So, any relationship between y and x in the form of y equal to mx plus c is going to form a line. So if you connect all the dots in this scatter plot, you will get a line. Now there are four things that make up this equation of a line, which is y, which is the target variable, x is the predictor, m is the slope which spins the graph, and c is the constant which shifts the graph. And it is also important to note that C also gives us the point where the line cuts the y-axis at x equal to 0. So now we know what a predictor is, what a target variable is, and what does linear relationship mean. 
So now that we know the line equation and the four important components that make up the line equation, it's high time we expand our definition. Out of these four variables, y which is the target is known, x which is the predictor is also known, whereas m and c both are unknowns. Thus, the main objective of linear regression algorithm is to find the slope and the intercept. And that is what we need to add to the definition. And that leads us to the next set of explanations. It starts with how do we find the slope and intercept? There are two popular methods to find the slope and the intercept. And the first one is ordinary least squares and the other one is called as gradient descent. Now pay attention to what I'm about to say. Well, this gradient descent algorithm uses the machine learning constructs to solve the linear regression problem. Whereas ordinary least squares on the other hand is not a machine learning algorithm, it's just a formula algorithm. So it's not accurate to call the linear regression algorithm as a machine learning algorithm. But hey, we're talking about data science interviews here. So we still want you to talk about gradient descent. But in order to do that, first let's rule out ordinary least squares. I'll first start with why OLS was needed. Back in the old days, where scientists and mathematicians needed to solve a set of linear equations with just pen and paper, they needed to find a formula for MNC, which could give them the closest values for MNC, and this could be achieved through the help of partial differential equations. But today, we have computers which can easily try and do a quick search to understand which is the best value for MNC if guided by an algorithm. Moreover, there are always limitations to what humans can do with just pen and paper. We realized that when we had a need for more than just simple linear regression. Nevertheless, I will quickly show you what they did to find the best values for MNC. Don't worry if you don't understand it. It's obsolete nowadays what they did and how they did it. Alright, let's start with the normal equations for C and M. So substituting the value of c in the normal equation for m, we can solve for m. And now substituting the value of m in the equation of c, we can get the value of c. Now these are the two equations for m and c. This same equation could also be represented as and well this formula for m is quite a good approximation for m where it says that m equal to covariance of x and y divided by variance of x all right it's time to plug what we learned thus far into a real data and let's find m and c this is just a set of random observations i just came up with now i have tabulated it as x and y and i have plotted them against each other in a scatter plot and for the next steps, we have identified all the necessary components that are needed for the above equations. Y square is not of much use here, but I just have it here just as an indicator. The most important portion is the last row of the table that we have. So which is the summation value for all the necessary components. So this is what we have and all the necessary components are here. Of course, y squared is not needed. So we calculate M and we calculate C. If you plug in all the components, this is the value that you get for M and C. Now let's keep M and C there for reference. And when we plot this into the scatter plot, this is the line that we get. So Y equal to MX plus C where y equal to 3.42 and c equal to 2.29. Alright, let's stop here because the next concept is where we start introducing you to machine learning. So, let's consolidate what we have learned so far. 
we understood what is simple linear regression and why it is called simple because there is only one x variable and one y variable. If there is more x variable, it's called as multiple linear regression. And if, if we have more y variables, it's called as multivariate regression. We also saw how ordinary least squares method works. At the same time, we also know why that method is obsolete. The other thing that we have learned is we have another method to solve linear regression and it's called as gradient descent. And that is what makes linear regression a machine learning algorithm. We'll be looking at it in detail in the next video. And so in the next video, let's see what is residuals and what is an objective function and what is gradient descent algorithm. Putting these three things together, we'll look at what I meant by machine learning construct. And let's also take a look at what we have in store for you in this regression playlist. So we will also look at multiple linear regression and we'll also need to look at assumptions of linear regression which is very very important. And we also have to look at all the methods to handle categorical variables. And last but not the least, we will be looking at practical linear regression where a lot of things is not as easy as it seems. So until next time. Thank you very much, please subscribe and spread the word.